And the last 15 minutes or so, voting has ended in tur Turkey's parliamentary elections. They are the second in five months. Security has been one of the priorities for voters after violence with Kurdish militants and bomb attacks blamed on the so-called Islamic State. Well, the rerun was necessary after the failure of coalition talks in the aftermath of June's poll. Well, our correspondent Mark Lowen is following the elections in the Turkish capital, Ankara. Mark. Jamie, thank you very much indeed. And hello from a rather chilly Ankara where the polls have now closed and the ballot papers are being counted at polling stations like this one behind me and those across the country uh, to, to find out who will form the next government of Turkey. It is a hugely important election, one that comes amidst weeks of violence here after a ceasefire with PKK Kurdish rebels broke down in July. There has been a deadly cycle of tit-for-tat attacks between the two sides since then and three separate bomb attacks since June blamed on Islamic State, the most deadly here in Ankara late last month, killing over 100 people, the worst ever attack on Turkish soil. And so we now wait to find out whether or not there will be able to be a single majority government here or whether for the first time in 13 years Turkey will be forced into a coalition government, whether the AK party founded by President Recep Tayyip Erdogan will lose its majority as it did in June, whether the results now will, will echo that election and whether it will be forced into coalition. Let's talk about some of these issues now with Sinan Ulgen, head of the EDAM think tank and a visiting fellow at Carnegie Europe. Sinan, tell me, what do you believe is uh, the, cr uh, the crux at the heart of this election. What does this election boil down to for you? It's really a clash between two narratives. One narrative being the narrative of stability championed by the ruling party, uh, which essentially says that Turkey needs a single party government to end uh, the current uh, political instability. And the other narrative is a narrative of pluralism, which essentially boils down to the argument that Turkey now needs a broader based coalition also to appease the uh, very high level of uh, political polarization. What is the, uh, the cause of that political polarization? People talk about Turkey being more polarized really than at any time in its modern history. That's true. It's really compared to uh, many decades ago, uh, Turkey is indeed polarized, uh, especially uh, since, since the 1980s. This is the most acute period of polarization. Uh, and the main reason for that is really the uh, upsurge of identity politics, uh, both by uh, the ruling party, President Erdogan, uh, but also uh, the Kurdish party, uh, which has in a way cocooned Turkish politics. Uh, into an identity struggle uh, and we shall now see whether the Turkish society will be able to transcend it. You mentioned that President Erdogan, uh, he's widely believed to have scuppered the coalition talks last time to force a second uh, election so as to try to regain the majority for his party he founded. What is at stake for him in, in all of this? Uh, well, obviously President Erdogan is still being viewed uh, as being in the driver uh, seat of the AK party politics. Uh, so he indeed rolled the dice uh, after the 7th of June uh, by uh, pushing the country towards an early election, which is taking place today. Uh, and if he gets the single party majority, obviously it will be viewed as a big win for Erdogan. It will consolidate his uh, position within the Turkish political landscape. But if he fails to get that, uh, then, then he will have, uh, he will begrudgingly have to accept the outcome of a coalition uh, which structurally will weaken him uh, because power will be more divided. But briefly, do you believe that that is a done deal, a coalition, or could, there, could he try for a third election uh, even to try to get that majority? That will be the big question of tonight. Uh, because even if uh, the ruling AK party does not get the 276 seats in Turkish parliament, but if they, came, if they come really close to that, uh, then we can indeed talk realistically about a scenario of another a third election uh, where, uh, based on this narrative of stability, the ruling party might try to get uh, the majority that it had lost in the June elections. OK, Sinan, again, thank you very much indeed. Fascinating stuff. We will probably find out in three or four hours' time the shape of the future government, but there could be uh, problems with irregularities. We're getting reports of some isolated cases across the country. That could force recounts in certain constituencies, but we will certainly have a clearer idea later on in the evening which way this Im hugely important election will go. We'll have full coverage across BBC World News. Stay with us for all the coverage and analysis. But for the time being, from here in Turkey, I'll hand you back to London. Mark, thanks very much. Mark Lowen there. Now let's cross live to the BBC 